What is up players? It is War Boss Tay back up in this mug doing the Space Marine, Tech Marine, and Servitors box set. We're gonna unbox and assemble this miniature and or these miniatures you're gonna get one tech marine in the kit and four servitors two of them are armed with bolt heavy bolters and two of them are armed with uh i guess little servo hands but hey what do you know it's fine cast it's your friend and my friend it's the finest of casts <laughs> it was it was the worst of casts it was the finest of casts <laughs> it's oh boy it's terrible. It's uh, it really. I, I wonder if this was made because I, I had purchased this for uh, a commission, and uh, I wonder if this box kit was just sitting in the store. Fine cost. I think it was just sitting in the store, and nobody purchased it because it looks like the older um, fine cast that was really uh, you know, kind of warpy and really flashy, and it has a lot of um, this fine cast resin but you know I'm I'm not gonna judge it I'm just gonna show you what it is and uh, let you be the judge but I, I really it really makes me miss the old metal because these are some really great characterful models and in the metal it would have been really really great the first thing I noticed was that the bases were the old 28 millimeter bases with slots in them and uh, that always is indicative of the fine cast models having slotted bases. So here you've got the four servitors. You can see a lot of flash and um, just a lot of extra fine cast resin bits sticking to all of the. I mean, look at that. Um, the chain fist sword, chain sword, chain fist drill thing. It's, uh, it's a lot to clean up. If you are a new modeler, if you are a younger hobbyist or modeler, then um, this is a very daunting material to work with because it is so easy to think that you're clipping the model from the sprue and uh, what you're really doing is you know actually clipping parts of the model itself. It's really kind of uh, finicky so you have to really look at what you're working with to make sure you're not cutting off a piece of the actual model so you can see on the sprue that there are a you've got the tech marine this one for some reason has the head already glued on and I, I kind of remember I thought I remembered at least the old tech marine model in metal having an alternate head like a half flesh half metal face but I don't know was I just remembering that wrong Oh my gosh, it was the Mandela effect. <laughs> oh jeez, what is going on? So uh, I just noticed also that on the back of his backpack, we'll take a look at it when I'm actually building it up. But his uh, his backpack is like a little a little whirly gig at the top. So uh, the first thing that I'm doing is I'm clipping him out of the sprue, and they come in these weird I don't want to say weird. They come in these frames that uh, you have to make sure you're clipping at exactly the right angle and at the bottoms where the tabs are you can see sometimes there's a little bit of extra resin that's really i don't want to say well what's the word i'm looking for it's really difficult to fit to work with because you have to actually clip them and cut them and shave them in order for the model to even sit on the base so uh, some people might even want to just you know clip the entire tab out completely and uh, I guess that's fine too. You've got two arms, and I think I went with this. He's got the bolt, the bolt pistol, or an actual bolter. He's got his weapon, and he's got it raised. There's also a hand option where he's uh, looking into, or he, it's like a little uh, iPad thing that he's holding, and I forgot what they call data slates, hollow slates. I decided to go with the, the weapon because he's already striding forward. I think it's a little bit more characterful for him to be holding that gun because he's got all these Doc Octopus servo arms around him. So I think it's more uh, thematic, more epic, more heroic for him to be striding forward, aiming a weapon as he's going. So the first thing I'm going to be clipping off is his uh, arm here, both of his arms. One of them is holding this uh, giant two-handed axe. Now the good thing about this kit, one of the good things, I'm, I'm not gonna be totally negative about this experience, one of the good things is that the axe is straight, it's not bent. Some of you might remember my ogre uh, executioner guy 
had a very, very warped um, staff, or uh, yeah, sickle thing. And also my ogre fire breather had a very warped staff. So it, it's nice that the, uh, the long and straight and narrow axe handle is actually straight, so kudos. It's terrible. I'm like complimenting a basic, <laughs> a basic thing that you know for a premium priced product they should have really never had any problems with. But oh well, what are you gonna do? So I'm shaving off and I'm cutting out from the frames these servo arms. The servo arms are really nice and in if in metal they would be really thick and, and chunky and um, they probably would be very finicky to glue into place. For those of you who have the Tech Marine models, you might know, but um, I, I've never built one before. So all I know is working with, uh, there, there are four places where you can connect them to the backpack here. And there are uh, four arms that you can choose from. And I, th I think there might be actually five or six. But I'm going to be um, putting the backpack on. And you can see there's more extra resin that kind of connect from the back. And I have to shave it off because otherwise the backpack's not going to fit. And uh, I'm getting all of this extra resin all over my workspace, which is terrible. Because that's more things you're going to have to clean up. And it's just not fun to have all this extra resin dust. So it's uh, really important that you keep your space clean and organized, which I'm going to do after this session. I'm using Army Painter Super Glue Activator, and it's so helpful. You just put a little bit of super glue, you spray some of the activator on, and literally within, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, it's completely set. If I was working with the metal model, I would not be able to hold it together and have it stay like that. The, for some reason, when I'm working with metal and super glue, uh, it's just never worked for me. Some of you might remember my old uh, Vastroyan's projects. My older projects, I have to, I would have to use a uh, plastic putty and all sorts of stuff to hold the metal pieces together. So, a uh, super glue activator, definitely, definitely go out and get that product if you work with a lot of metal miniatures or if you work with resin. Super glue is not really that great to work with plastic, but with resin, resin on plastic, metal, definitely, uh, it's you can't beat it. It's so helpful because it doesn't get super glue all over your fingers. And for those of you who remember my project last year, that was a huge problem. And super glue all over my fingertips all the time is terrible. Clipping out flash, just, boy, If could you imagine if I was playing this in real time, this would be like an 11 minute clip of me just going through each one of these little limbs and clipping out all of the different pieces. <laughs> you can see I'm watching one of uh, Doc Eon's Monday Miniatures Ramble. Uh, it's, it's always great to have a video on in the background while you work, and um, I'm not near one, my uh, smart TV, so I can't pop the video up on my TV screen, but it's it's nice to have my phone nearby. So uh, hey, if you're putting this in the background while you're working, thank you very much. I hope uh, it's providing some motivating and inspirational, I guess, little nudges to get you working. I think assembly, assembly used to be my favorite thing about the hobby. I used to love thinking of ways to convert and to uh, create epic poses and uh, to plan out a model's composition before I even start painting it. And um, I remember it's what really drew me into the hobby in the first place. It's one of the things I was like, I really want individual models and I want my models to be, you know, so characterful and so, it has so much personality that everyone is going to know that it's a War Boss Tay model. And with with models recently, the way that they're constructing them, like even going back so far as this Tech Marine, there, there's only so many arms you can throw on him. And in the Space Marine kit, there's in in, in any of the, the the model ranges, even the Skitari, I don't th I think they're already you know pretty built up. You don't have servo arms and um, these weird looking tech pieces and, uh, and and especially with the newer space marine sculpts like the video i just did about the space marine heroes 
those are already set in their poses and they have one loadout. So, you know, I kind of miss that that freedom to, to experiment. Okay, here we go with the servitors and um, this is going to be part one of my two-part series and I've realized like there's just so much flash and it's so hard to get the model off of the frame. I have to actually sometimes even cut the frame itself. So there's a lot of cleaning, there's a lot of um, gluing together that I have to figure out how I'm going to work these models together. So um, th what I did was I took the box and I lined them up so that they would line up to the, uh, the models so that they can be built as they are on the box. So hey, thanks for watching. I hope you stay tuned for part two where I'm going to finish building up the servitors and uh, I'll give my final reviews and thoughts. So far, you know, Finecast was a huge endeavor for Games Workshop and it didn't work out, I think, quite the way they wanted it to, but I'm glad they tried it because, hey, if they'd never tried it, then they wouldn't know, you know, <laughs> how people feel about it. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next video.